All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, we're carrying on with the dawn of the Aspects prologue, and I have an excuse for why everyone has the same voice in this one, because they're all usually voiced by Chris Metzen, so it's actually really authentic. So let's go! Isira awoke from her visions of the Dragon Soul and found herself back in the clearing with Thrall. He was still completely out of it, so she decided to just leave him be. She was still a little bit skeptical of her vision, could the Dragon Soul really be the salvation of Azeroth, after all the suffering and death it unleashed? But it was something, a plan, a chance. So she raced off to find Kalak and Alexstrasza, and she was pretty excited about it. However, Thrall was having a little out-of-body experience of his own. His spirit was currently diving through the soil beneath Hyjal, swimming through dirt and stone and sand and stuff. He wasn't exactly sure where he was going, but he was enjoying the feeling of it. The dirt in his palm and the soil around him felt like an extension of himself, like extra fingers or something. Even the Earth Elementals, who had been so chaotic recently, embraced him. They bloody loved him. You could also feel the activity going on up at the surface. Agra and other shaman were whispering to the Earth. Druids were still up there guiding the World Tree's roots. It was as soothing to Thrall as it was the Earth around him. So basically, he was just having a whale of a time. But as his spirit reached the foothills of the mountain, he realised this was the farthest he'd dared to venture before, and the same old doubts started creeping in. He suddenly felt extremely aware of the distance between his spirit and his physical body. But this time he had his anchor. He focused on the lump of dirt in his hand and repeated Asira's lesson. This dirt is Azeroth. The world is one body. And it worked. Thrall felt so bloody emboldened, he went ahead and plunged even deeper. And by even deeper, I mean, he moved through the sun-baked soil of Durotar, no matter how different or remote the lands, they were all connected in a way he'd never even realised before. He also discovered a whole bunch of new and strange oddities that he'd been completely ignorant to. In the Great Sea, for example, there's a mysterious island, shrouded in mists and covered in pandas. And in the Eastern Kingdoms, beneath Kazmadan, there was a presence. Not an elemental, a mortal, who had transcended the bounds of flesh, just like Thrall. And it spoke with a dwarven accent, and kept yelling stuff like, "Fucking heal her wounds! But what really piqued Thrall's interest was the network of immense caverns, cold and unnatural, scattered throughout the globe. Not even the Earth Elementals would approach these pockets of lifelessness, so Thrall decided to go ahead and check one out. What's the worst that could happen? So he directed his spirit towards the subterranean hollow beneath Mount Hyjal. Unlike the rest of Azeroth, whatever lay inside the cavern was hidden from his sight. But as he moved closer, he heard a voice, bristling with unfathomable... That's a difficult word to say. Unfathomable bristling with unfathomable power. Sup, bruh? Come on in. The voice was coming from inside a chamber, so Thrall went ahead and pushed himself inside. Who's there? Who are you? It was pretty dark inside the cavern. The walls and floor were coated in some kind of crystalline substance, and it was so black it appeared to consume all light around it. Over here, here lies the truth of this world. Thrall entered deeper into the chamber. This voice was quite authoritative, so he felt a little bit enticed to do what it said. But with every step he took, his connection to his physical body and the rest of Azeroth was growing thinner. But it's fine, as long as he has his lump of dirt. He could just about make out a humanoid figure in the middle of the cavern, and as he moved closer, that figure's eyes opened, and they burned the colour of molten rock. The shadows veiling the figure dissipated, revealing that it was none other than Deathwing himself. The arrogance of Shaman never ceases to amaze me. You seek to tame a power that by rights is not yours to command in the first place, you dick. Thrall was not interested in sticking around and having a conversation with Deathwing. He was interested in cheesing it and getting as far away from this cavern as possible. Unfortunately, plates of black crystal ripped up from the floor and blocked the exit. He tried to punch it, and that didn't work, so he tried to plead to the elemental spirits to control this black substance and get it out of the way, but that didn't work either. Intriguing, isn't it? The blood of the old gods. They're not from this world, so it's not going to listen to your shaman nonsense. Only the Chosen hold true sway over it. And you ain't chosen. I've been waiting for you, for quite a while actually. Been watching as you blindly stumbled through the soil. I didn't think you had the courage to venture this far, but your progress proves what I suspected. The other aspects seek to grant you my power. They want to replace me. With a shit mortal. Thrall had no idea why Deathwing thought this. Isira and her comrades had already told him he would never become an aspect. Or the Earth Warder. They had no part in giving me these powers, and the decision to use them was mine alone. As he was speaking, Thrall was trying to sneakily edge along the cavern wall to see if he could feel any cracks or weak spots in the old god blood. I have my eyes in many places, Shaman. 
I know they're up there in high jail scheming, and I know you're with them. They lured you into this fate without your knowledge, intent on making my curse yours. It's not a bloody curse, mate. It's a gift. A gift. You're as misguided as the rest of them. These charges the Titans imposed upon us. They're nothing more than prisons. But the Titans gave you purpose. What ifs? Azeroth was an experiment to them. A plaything. And when they got bored, they turned their backs on us and buggered off. Indifferent to the broken world they left behind. It's broken because you broke it, you twat. Because you forsook your gift. That was twice Thrall had called it a gift now, and it was really starting to rustle Deathwing's jimmies. His body was quaking with rage, and Thrall noticed. Yeah, a gift. He didn't have the strength to bear the gift. Gifty gift gift. Stop saying gift! You know what? You want to keep calling it a gift? Fine. I'll let you experience what this gift feels like. Suddenly, pain flared deep within Thrall's chest. It was excruciating. His legs trembled as the weight of the world pressed down on him, and his spirit felt like it was on fire. Still think it's a gift, buddy? This is what the other aspects want for you, to damn you to a life of eternal torment. But through the agony, Thrall realised something a little bit amusing. He now possessed incredible strength. He had control of the entire world. Deathwing had been so arrogant that he'd given him this advantage, so Thrall didn't question his intuition. This was the moment he'd been waiting for. In one swift motion, the orc channeled the burden of Azeroth into his fist and struck out at Deathwing. This was definitely going to work, and Thrall was definitely going to save the world. The Black Aspect watched this unfold, and just before Thrall's big Azeroth fist connected with his face, he ripped the power away from him. Thrall's punch landed, but it was just a little weedy mortal punch, and so the only person it actually hurt was Thrall. His arm shattered into a million pieces, all the way down to his elbow. As he fell to his knees and cried his eyes out, Deathwing just kind of laughed at him. Things weren't looking very good, and what's worse, up topside, in Hyjal, Thrall's left palm was now completely empty. The last of Asira's lump of dirt had slipped through his fingers, so that's pretty bad. And we're leaving it there! That was fun. In the next video, a little bit of character building whilst the Aspects have another brain trust meeting, and Asira realises Thrall is in trouble, so she tries to help him and stuff. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying the book. But I'm not affiliated to any retailers or anything. I think I have to say that, otherwise I get sued. Also, there's links to my Discord channel and my Patreon page, and all of that stuff too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!